I'm pretty excited because we have my good friend here. Coming up next, cross-platform mobile apps made easy using Xamarin with the fabulous and amazing James Montemagno. I, I try to hang out with him a lot, but like he won't let me in his house. I mean, I, I was only there at three last night. I mean, you didn't let me in. What the heck? Sorry. I mean, <laughs> I was asleep. I was prepping. Oh, that's right. That's right. I was that's getting right. ready for this. All right, so, James. Take it away, buddy. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, Seth. Uh, the, the problem is if you would have came at two, boom, you can, I'll buzz you in. Three, that's too late for me. So, well, thanks, everyone. I'm really excited to actually talk about today all the really exciting enhancements that we have for .NET development. Uh, for mobile applications with Xamarin and Visual Studio 2019. You may have seen me a few times uh, before uh, on, on, on Channel 9 and on YouTube doing the Xamarin Show, which we record every single week and put out for all of the things that you're going to do. So I want to kind of walk through a few things today, show off some apps, what we're building in VS 2019, uh, both on Windows and on the Mac, and show you some of the new features, but also for anyone brand new to mobile development, with .NET and Xamarin. I'm gonna walk you through the basics. I don't wanna to do too many slides, I wanna get into demos, so let's get started. Now, what I think about mobile development, or just development in general here at Microsoft, we want you to be able to build for any platform humanly possible, and that's where .NET comes in. Whether you wanna build a desktop app with WPF or UWP or WinForms, a mobile app with Xamarin for iOS or Android, an IoT device, a web application, .NET is for you. And Xamarin fits right inside of here. Uh, so building iOS, Android apps, Mac applications, tvOS watch applications. So Xamarin is part of .NET, and it's all inside of Visual Studio for you. So I like to define really quick of like, what is Xamarin? You know, people are thinking, what is Xamarin? And you're saying it's part of .NET. Well, I like to define Xamarin as an open source app platform from Microsoft for building modern and performant iOS, Android, macOS, watchOS, and tvOS applications all with C Sharp and .NET. That means that you can reuse your existing C Sharp and .NET skills to you know, write apps for all of these different platforms, humanly possible. And I'll walk through what that means from like shared logic and user interface and how these applications are native. So let's talk about that app development. You know, with Xamarin, we want to give you a productive environment, reuse all of the things that you love in Visual Studio and Visual Studio for Mac, uh, reuse all of your code across different platforms. We want these applications to have great integrations and native performance, and of course, integrate into that expansive ecosystem of .NET. So when I think of the app architecture really quick, I think of it like this, is we have these head projects, iOS projects, Android projects, and now with Xamarin, and then any other .NET application. It could be a UWP app, a WPF application, your web applications. And then what we're gonna do is share a bulk of our C Sharp business logic platform APIs and user interface, um, depending on how much or how little you want to share between all of them. But the unique part is that Xamarin delivers the ability to build out native apps for each and then share a bulk of your code while being native. So those native APRs are kind of what you would kind of expect when you use your phone. So things like finger, fingerprint permissions, uh, you know, augmented reality, machine learning, music APIs, uh, Google Play services, camera, all those great native APIs. And for Xamarin, we give you all of those APIs for iOS, Android, and all the other platforms, all in C Sharp, all inside of Visual Studio. Now, each platform is pretty unique and have different APIs, but there are some similarities between all of them. So we try to simplify that aspect of uh, the development with Xamarin and .NET. And that's why we created Xamarin Essentials which is a single library that enables developers to access native APIs from a shared single cross-platform library. So things like secure settings and preferences and geolocation, connectivity, uh, all from a single API. So now we can kind of see, well, we have business logic. That's just .NET logic, right? Models, view models, RESTful service calls. Xamarin Essentials kind of lifts it up here. So what we can do is take that model of the architecture and kind of expand it. It's still a blue box because it's still shared across the different platforms. But what about the, the user interface bits and pieces of it? You can build out native UIs on each platform, but we also thought about, well, developers wanting to share even more code, and that's where Xamarin Forms comes in, uh, which is a library that enables you to share cross-platform user interface on different platforms like iOS, Android, and UWP. So I like to define it as an open source mobile UI framework from Microsoft for building iOS, Android, and Windows apps with .NET 
from a single share, shared C Sharp code base. Now what's great about this is that you take that exact same model, right, where we had C Sharp business logic, models, view models, RESTful service calls, Xamarin essentials, and now Xamarin forms for your user interface. And you can mix and, max, uh, mix and match as much or as little of this as you want. So it could be all of your app, some of your app, or none of your app, because you can still build out native Android uh, user interfaces and iOS user interfaces as well. But most of our developers on average share over 80% of code across all these different platforms. So let's just get into it. Let's, uh, let's build an app. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just pull up Visual Studio 2019, our Get to Code experience. And when you say uh, create a new project, what you're going to find in here is all the project templates that you would expect. And over here, we can go ahead and drop down and tap on mobile. And when you say project type mobile, you're going to see all of the different Xamarin projects and .NET projects in here. You can also come in and say, oh, I want Android or iOS or tvOS or Windows platforms uh, specifically. And what you note is that we have Android projects, iOS projects, Android Wear, watchOS. Uh, down here, we have these binding libraries, which enable you to bring over native libraries from iOS and Android into your Xamarin apps, uh, and even tvOS applications right, right here from this toolbox. Uh, if you select mobile app, that's going to give you the cross-platform user interface with Xamarin Forms. It even says Xamarin Forms right there. And when you select Next, uh, you can create your project, and you get a few more options here. So we've redone some of these, and here we can go ahead and tap on Master Detail for like a flyout navigation, tabbed, a blank application, and we have a new preview of Shell, which handles all of your app navigation. Now, on any of these, you can select your platforms, add additional platforms like UWP or other ones in there. And you can even add um, an ASP.NET Core Web API backend. So I've already done that and configured it just like this. And what I'm going to do is open that project and walk through it. So here I am inside of it. So let's zoom in a little bit because I love to zoom. And what we'll notice here is that I have an Android project, an iOS project, and a .NET Core uh, ASP.NET Core Web API backend. So this uh, backend here is just a standard you know, uh, API controller. I actually have it running here inside of Kestrel, which is our cross-platform web server backend that will enable me to debug locally on my Android device. And these head projects are just kind of what I described there. And I also have a .NET standard library, which is just my first mobile app. And under SDK, it's a .NET standard library. It has my models. I have services in here, view models. And I have shared XAML user interface across all these platforms for iOS and Android uh, here. Now, I also have some NuGet packages. So I have like JSON.net. You, know, you can pull down basically anything from NuGet. Then I have Xamarin Essentials and Xamarin Forms. I'm also bringing in a new library that we just released called Xamarin Forms Visual Material that will enable me to do material design uh, across each of the platforms uh, that we support, which is really nice for iOS and Android. So this is just like a .NET standard library. Here's everything that we see. And what I want to show you is what sort of the user interface looks like uh, at a high level. So we have that item controller. We need to query it. So in my code behind, I have a items view model. Here, I'm just going to use all C sharp.net that will be shared across. I have an observable collection of items. Uh, when I want to load them, I will simply call execute load items. It's going to go off to my data store, which I'll show you in a, a few seconds here, and then add those items to the list. Now, in my user interface uh, here for my items page, we have cross platform XAML with Xamarin Forms. So inside of here, it's an XML representation of my user interface. So over here, I can pull out a toolbox, drag and drop controls right on the XAML. I can go ahead and tap on one of the controls. I get my property grid on the bottom right that you'd expect. And here I have a list view. So here I'm going to go in. I can see my item source as items. I've pulled the refresh enabled. And then inside of this data cell, I'm going to give it a representation to display an icon. Uh, and also a label here of the text and description. Now, it's just C Sharp.NET logic, nothing crazy. So when I make that web backend call, it's going to look a little bit like this. I have my Azure data store. It has an HTTP client that I've used for years. 
I have a URI that I specify with a backend. And over here, I'm doing a few interesting things. Notice when I say get items async, it will go and get a string to call the API and use JSON.NET to deserialize it. It will also check for internet connectivity using Xamarin Essentials on iOS and Android. So a single API to check internet access there. Now the important part is that I've configured this app for a specific URL since I'm running it local. Here, I've set my backend just to be local host, but notice that on Android, since it's gonna be an emulator, uh, we're gonna just do the Android IP address for local host. And again, I'm gonna use Xamarin Essentials to say, am I on Android, use 10.0.2.2.500, else use localhost 5000 for like iOS or UWP. So here I can pull up my Android emulator, and we'll go ahead and bring up the web server in the back end, and I'm, I'm running my Android emulators here on top of Hyper-V. So we've extended Hyper-V to uh, support the native Google Android emulators right out of the box. You can run Google Play services if you want on it, anything that you want. And here the application is loading, uh, and here we have some tabs on the bottom, uh, and it's gonna go and make a web request and get some items. If I come in, uh, add a new item, and I say, hello uh, world, and we'll go ahead and drop that down and hit save up here. We'll notice that this is running in the back end, and in fact, I have Swagger running over here, and if I try out my web API, hit execute over here, we can see that this hello world right here is coming from my app, which is really cool. So as we start to think about how we're going to develop the user interface, we have a, a few tools in mind, and not just only for editing the XAML. Perhaps you want to update this new item page. I don't really like that the cancel and save are here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, come over to this new item page, and we have our Xamarin Forms previewer, so I can get a side-by-side -side of uh, my XAML here. And what I'm gonna note here is that I don't really like this toolbar item, uh, so we're gonna get rid of that. And what we can do down here is maybe add a button and notice that IntelliCode jumps in and gives me recommendations. I type B and B is in label and button and IntelliCode says button. It'll also recommend that I set text or the background color or the command here. So we'll go ahead and set the text of save. Let's do uh, the clicked event to the uh, save clicked event here. And let's just go ahead and set the background color over to, let's say, a static resource that I've defined called navigation primary. And then we can go ahead and close that out. There's my button, it shows up. Now this, uh, this little uh, property that I just showed actually came from shared resources in all my apps. So that's where this navigation primary is coming from. So now that we have this here, we can do a few things. It, it shouldn't be right underneath it. Maybe I'll go ahead and modify, let's say, the, the vertical options and maybe do, let's say, end and expand. And it updates, uh, updates it over here for me inside my XAML, so we can see it right here. Uh, one of my favorite things that we just added is design time data support. So here, for instance, I have some attributes to say D colon on anything. And what I can do in that is I could say D colon uh, background color equals red, for instance, and then in my design view, I can see how much space it's actually filling up inside of it, um, whereas as soon as I get rid of that, it's gonna go back into my, my blue. So maybe here we wanna see text color equals, let's say white here. So now we'll see it update to white. Now, I really didn't like sort of that I had to have some labels to enter these items. I'd really love that material design look where the, the placeholder moves up and down. So what we can do here is enable a brand new feature of Xamarin Forms that we call visual. And we're gonna set this to material visual. And we're gonna see a few things change. Look at this inside of my preview. When I set default, it changes to be a kind of a generic default button. If I change the material, we now get updates inside of our user interface. So here what I can do on the label is actually just get rid of it. I can just say, get out of here. And then over here, maybe I'll set my placeholder equal to text, um, which will move up once I enter it. The same thing here on the editor, I'll say placeholder equals description. 
and we'll go ahead and set it here. Now what I do like is that with material buttons, I can set like a corner radius on this button and start to make it look real good. Maybe I'll set it to 18. I can see it respond there, which is nice. So let's go ahead with those changes, see what this looks like as I uh, rev this application. So I'm gonna now go in, hit recompile, redeploy. It's gonna recompile my Android application with the changes that I made and then deploy it to my Android emulator that's sitting over here. So let's give it a, give it a second to, to build up on my machine. Um, here we go. And see what it's gonna do here. I can go ahead and close this out. There we go. Um, and those design attributes that I showed uh, work on any property. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit more what that looks like. So here we've relaunched. We've worked a lot on optimizing uh, the build time. So you'll see a lot of improvements in Visual Studio uh, 2019 for both iOS and Android. So here I have uh, my application. Since I'm still running against that web server, I get that hello world. Uh, now I can hit add again. Now we're going to get really nice material design here on both of these uh, with literally zero work at all. And I'll say hello uh, over here and I'll say uh, from material design. There we go. And then on this button, I get this really nice effect and I can save that back out I go ahead and it updates and I'm good to go. Now, uh, what I want to show though is that inside this application, I can also debug it right here on iOS with those same changes. I have it connected here to my Mac right here on the local guest network and I can just see all of my iOS um, simulators right here or plug in a physical device to my Mac and have it debug over onto my iOS device or simulator. Now you may be saying, okay, well, there's a, a simulator now. This is our rem remoted iOS simulator that we have when I hit debug. Where is that running? How can it talk to the web API backend? Uh, well, the simulator is running on my Mac and we're sort of porting it over to the Windows machine. So I took the same project and ran the web server over on my Mac since this is literally running on localhost on my Mac, which is uh, pretty nice. So now I'm in a full debug session from my Windows machine right here onto my iOS simulator. When I hit add, I have the same exact material design that I would expect to have um, uh, just like I had on my uh, Android device. I can hit done here, then we can hit save. So boom, now we have the same exact application talking a web API backend from my Windows machine. But I wanna kinda of take this a little bit further and tell you some of the other things that we're doing here, especially with the design time data. So remember I had this, this uh, big list of data here and, and I wanna uh, kinda of rev on it a little bit. And if I pull out the, the previewer at this point, uh, we're gonna see uh, basically nothing <laughs> inside of it. So uh, it'll uh, initialize up here and we'll see a big blank page. Well, that's because there's you know a list of items and literally nothing in it. But I could take advantage of our good friend design time data. So here we have an item source. And what I can do is kind of bring in a little templated code give it a design item source. So here I'll go ahead and copy in this item source. And what I'm gonna do is simply say uh, empty strings at this point. And I could say hello from Visual Studio. Now we see the frame, because there's three items inside of here. And if I wanted to, I could come down and simply say d colon text and I could set this equal to hello, for instance, which makes all of them hello, or I could say binding dot, which is really nice. And I see hello from Visual Studio. Now let's take it to another level though, uh, because what I can do is not only just give it strings, but give it full items inside of here. So let's go ahead and replace this item source of strings with the actual model. So what I've done here, as I've added two items. One that says Scott Hanselman loves tacos and a picture of his face, which is inside my iOS and Android project. And the Visual Studio 2019 is an amazing IDE. So here we have an icon, also a first name. So if I remove this icon, 
we'll see it update with T there. Uh, if I come in and put the uh, icon back, which I even get IntelliSense for there, to scott.png, we'll go ahead and see Scott show up. Now this is nice because uh, I've bound this icon and the text first, and if I simply remove this design, I'm going to be using the real bindings but using design time data with very, very little uh, energy or effort at all. And I can come in and just see Scott's beautiful face staring back at me over and over and over again, which is exactly how I want to develop all of my applications, which is why I developed a Scott Hanselman application that I've been building live and updating with all these new features. So I have Scott just looking at me right on my iOS and Android device 24 7. <laughs> it's pretty great. So those are some of the new features we have, but I want to show you what this looks like when I take this exact same project and open it up in Visual Studio 2019 for Mac. So I'm going to swap over my HDMI right now over to my Mac. Here we go. And what we'll go ahead and see once it's on the screen is the same exact project. Over here, I have my um, iOS Android product project and ASP.NET Core backend. Now what I've done though is instead of hitting my backend of localhost, I've added in an Azure backend and published it. You can right click, say publish, publish to Azure. This will query your subscriptions. You can send it right up to Azure. So now with the same exact project, I can do things that I would expect. So here I can go into my about page um, over here. We're going to go ahead and see all the same XAML that's loading up. Uh, it should go ahead and load up my iOS previewer right here on my Mac. And in fact, over on Visual Studio for Windows, I could have seen that as well. I just need to click over to the iOS tab. So here I go. I see everything here. Uh, and I can make changes and see it update. Now, if I go ahead and debug this application, what I'm going to show is that I'm running this over here inside of Azure right here. So if I go in and I say try it out and hit execute, we're going to go ahead and see my items, one, two, three, four, that are showing up. So now we're going to build our application. It's going to go into a full debug just like I did over on my Windows machine. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to be running this over on apparently my iPhone XS Max device, um, which is actually kind of cool because it's going to have the notch inside of there. And I'll show you one other thing about the items page, uh, item, new item page on top of here, which is that inside of the XAML, we have special attributes for iOS and Android. So here we're going to use the safe area. And in fact, on my main page, I was specifying bottom tabs on Android, some brand new properties there. So here's our application loading. Get it into debug mode. There we go. All of our project properties are there. I can go ahead and add a brand new one with all of our material design. Go ahead and hit save on there. And now we're hitting an Azure backend to save everything. So let me wrap up before we go into Q&A with some resources, because you can grab all the source code from here and kind of summarize up here. So you've kind of seen end-to-end -end building an application, what you get out of the box, but a lot more. Some of the brand new tools that we have built right into Visual Studio 2019, like IntelliCode support for all of your XAML and C Sharp, and some brand new Previewer and Android Hyper-V emulator. And we also sped up our remoted iOS simulator by 300%, which is pretty awesome. And here I'm on a guest network at Microsoft, and it works perfect. Now, of course, you can join tons of developers and companies that are building applications with .NET and Xamarin today. We love all of them. When you head to .NET and tap on mobile, you'll see a customer showcase page highlighting amazing developers around the globe building applications with .NET and Xamarin. So to recap, beautiful applications for just about anything you could possibly think about with Xamarin while sharing all of your C Sharp and .NET logic with existing .NET applications for any platform you possibly want. Use all your favorite libraries, json.net, refit, poly, anything out there. .NET standard enables all of it across all these platforms. You can share native APIs with Xamarin Essentials, share native UI code with Xamarin Forms, and of course, great new features like live share support, IntelliCode, previewers, and the iOS Remoted Simulator. You can get everything by just going to visualstudio.com, installing. You can snapshot this right now. 
which is going to give you a link to Xamarin, Xamarin Essentials, and the GitHub project with this code right there, um, which is awesome, and links to my show here on Channel 9. Five minutes, 25 minutes, did it, Seth. I'm so excited. What? Wow. You are like on the button. Pretty good. Fantastic. Let's go through some questions. I'm ready. We? All right, number one. Are there any new features in VS related to the Xamarin, such as stability of connection to the Mac, uh, PR project build, performance, improvements, and other stuff like that? Not the getting started with Xamarin forms for newbies on the new VS launch. Mm. Few things. So the first thing is that we uh, reduce our installation size of the product by 20, from 23 gigs to seven gigs, which is huge. Uh, we have spent a ton of time helping Android build and deploy times. So what we've done is every single release, and especially with Visual Studio 2019, you're going to see drastic, drastic, drastic improvements. The first build may take you know, a little bit more time because you're doing a full compilation, but iterative builds are seconds, not minutes anymore between projects. Now, if you add a new NuGet package or things like that, but if you just make a change to the XAML, boom, it keeps going right away. We've also spent tons of time on stability and updates, especially around bin and OBJ files, so those should be a thing of the past, hopefully. And of course, things just like getting the Android emulators running, speeding up the iOS simulator, um, and of course, that connection to a Mac should be super rock solid. I do it right here on the guest network at Microsoft, and there are thousands upon thousands of people on that network right now. Right now. And yeah, it's all real, it happened. Right now. They're, right now. They're, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Next question from Mick. Would it be possible to run on a remote iOS simulator using a Mac with a virtual instance of Windows running? Well, I don't know uh, exactly about that and how that uh, may break Apple's uh, EULAs for developers, but there are great partners such as Mac Stadium and Mac in Cloud, which have Visual Studio for Mac up there. All you need is an IP address to point at your Mac machine from your Windows, and boom, you're good to go. You, you it talks to, over SSH. You need to do the right thing, though. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Yep, and of course, it integrates into like Azure DevOps, App Center, so you can do builds and get it on your phone. Fantastic. Truth is singular, which is the a picture of a puppy <laughs> dog. Which I love is, dogs. I mean, I feel like this is the truth. Yeah. Uh, since the Android emulator runs on Hyper-V, I will assume that the same restrictions as Docker and therefore can't run VMware at the same time. Can you run, can you run not in, in Hyper-V? Oh, absolutely. So the, the thing is before this brand new support for those Android emulators running on Hyper-V is that you had to install Intel Haxum x86 emulation and you had to turn off Hyper-V. Uh, but you can run your Android emulators with that or with Hyper-V. It's up to you. And some machines don't even have uh, Hyper-V or perhaps um, their AMD processor. So we now support that. And we're working closely with the teams uh, when we release updates to Windows to make that better and better and better, uh, especially around you know, security and the lower level stuff that Hyper-V Hyper runs on, you know, every little, every patch. Fantastic. I love the do what makes you happy answer. <laughs> yeah, you do you. You do you. you, do you. Uh, next question from Dan. What's the limitations of the new Xamarin.preview? Yeah, so the previewer part of Visual Studio will show up your iOS and Android apps. I showed Android on Windows because to do iOS, you're going to have to have it connected to a Mac, and on Visual Studio for Mac, you can do both. We've done a lot of optimizations there. So out of the box, uh, you no longer have to compile your code. It just shows your XAML. It won't try to run your code, won't try to run your code behind, won't try to run your custom controls. We talked to developers, a lot of developers, and what we found is they just wanted a quick and easy preview of just about what my application would look like. They didn't need to be pixel perfect because there's so many different devices. Now you can select a, diff so a few different device form factors, you know, pixels and different uh, versions of, of iOS and, and Nexus devices and things like that. Uh, you still may run into some limitations, like if you try to run, you can opt in to run your custom code, but if you try to make web requests or do crazy low-level things on your machine, like that's going to break. So you can turn that off, though. You can opt out of that, which is the default. So you can kind of flip the bits back and forth. But we have updated documentation on docs.microsoft.com. So take a look for that. Awesome. Rapid fire, because we're running out of time. Does Xamarin yep. Essentials now provide an abstraction layer over the iOS Android native mapping? Functional functionality. Absolutely, yes. It supports iOS, Android, and UWP. It's included in every single template inside of Visual Studio 2019. It's completely open source and available in GA today. All right, rapid fire. Is material, uh, material visual available for Xamarin iOS without forms? Absolutely. You can grab the package called like Material iOS. You can tweet at me afterwards, but it's available on NuGet.
How do I add a UWP project to Xamarin Forms solution? Yep, we have great documentation. You just add a UWP app, add the Xamarin Forms NuGet, configure two things, boom, done. Man, we're getting it done. Is there built-in support for .NET embedding using Xamarin? Um, yes. Embedded Nader 4,000. Is yes. it 9,000 now? I don't know. 18 billion. Is hot reloading on the roadmap for Xamarin? Great question. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have more events coming soon. Awesome. And so we're going to finish with that. Thanks so much, James, for uh, being so gracious and coming in. Thanks for having me.